What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and yesterday we talked about five position battles that you need to watch for for the Jaguars heading into the 2019 season but today what we are going to be talking about is something that I am pretty passionate about and something that I think may be a hot take to some of you and to some of you it might be a lukewarm take because you might just agree with me but what we are going to be discussing today is why the Jags have the perfect wide receivers heading into 2019 there's a lot of people that were really mad that the Jags did not take a chance on a wide out in this year's draft and I'm going to tell you why everything is going to be all right ladies and gentlemen this is why the Jaguars have a perfect wide receiver room heading into the 2019 season Hit that intro. One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, four down. What is going on everybody? What is going on everybody? What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. Now the reason I have made this video is because I have seen a lot of debate online about what the Jags should have done at the wide receiver position and they talk about how the Jags don't have a number one wide receiver in Jacksonville. Now that is a good point. The Jags really don't have a wide receiver that can go up there and get you those 50-50 balls. You know, we don't have like a Calvin Johnson and Antonio Brown, you know, you name it, AJ Green, Julio Jones. We don't have that caliber of a wide receiver. However, from what I am understanding, these guys fit the scheme well and for what the Jags are trying to do these guys are the group of wide receivers that you want in Jacksonville you want the speedy guys the guys that can really take the top off the defense and you know though the Jags don't have a true 50-50 guy that's not to say that these guys don't have down the field potential and they don't have you know the deep ball potential you got guys like DJ Chark who really showed uh his his potential to be a number one deep ball threat in college and he really he didn't really show it in the NFL but that's kind of because he didn't have the quarterback that was throwing him the ball you know Blake Bortles was not a natural thrower of the football and this is the argument online I see all the time everybody that agrees with me says now these wide receivers have a guy who is a natural thrower of the football and you got to take into account this offensive line did not hold up very well last year Blake didn't have a lot of time to throw the ball and these guys did drop a lot of passes and I will agree with that as well that is a good take I understand that the Jags led the league in drops last year and a lot of these wide receivers are coming back for another season in fact most of them are but there are some key additions and some guys that are coming off of injury that are going to be playing a huge factor in how well the Jags play this season and how well the passing game is going to develop guys like Marquise Lee I think a lot of people forget how much of a factor Marquise Lee was he led the Jags in receiving yards the year before he got injured and I think he would have led them again uh, the year after in 2018 I think he would have made a huge difference there's a lot of people online like I say that doesn't get Marquise Lee and doesn't get the Marquise Lee hype Though he's not a guy that's going to completely take the top off the defense, run down the field, catch the deep ball, but he does have that in his arsenal. He is just super, super quick, and he knows how to get open. If you look at any of Marquise Lee's film, you know, whether he's running a drag route, a corner route, a deep post, you know, anything like that, Marquise Lee knows how to get open, and that's the best part about Marquise's game. And I think that's something that we missed last year. We didn't have really a guy that could just get open, you know, on a dime. You know, Keelan Cole was supposed to be that guy, but he was covered up. And then we made a big mistake in signing Dante Moncrief to that $10 million contract. So adding Marquise Lee back into the mix as a number one guy, a security blanket, I think he's going to be that security blanket to Nick Foles. And I think him and Foles are going to develop that chemistry. And now the guy that we replaced, basically, Dante Moncrief with, with Chris Conley, and Conley and Foles already have that connection. And Conley's another deep threat. Conley reminds me 
of kind of a D.D. Westbrook. You know, he can take the top off the defense. He has that speed. He can get behind your top corner and try and make the play. And now the Jags have a quarterback that can make that throw. The Jags for the last five years did not have a guy that can make that throw, at least consistently. You know, you've seen Blake throw a deep ball down the field that would get caught, and it would be a good pass, and you would say, damn, Blake, why can't you do this all the time? Now we got a guy in there named Nick Foles who has shown that he can consistently throw the football and he can hit on those deep balls. So when you have like D.D. Westbrook, Chris Conley running down the field and they're open, Nick Foles is going to be able to get them the football. That's some opportunity to do last year again because of Blake Bortles. And I hate to say that because I love Blake Bortles to my absolute core, but it's the facts. Blake couldn't get the ball down the field. You know, his confidence was very low. And that's the exact opposite what you're going to get with Nick Foles. Foles has all the confidence in the world. The former Super Bowl MVP. I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Like, I know Nick Foles isn't a Tom Brady, but he beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. So I don't know what else more you want. You know, he's not a Drew Brees. He's not going to throw like over 4,000 yards this season, but if you want a guy that could go out there, get it done, and doesn't make a lot of mistakes, Nick Foles is your guy. Foles doesn't throw a lot of interceptions, and again, that goes on the flip side for when Blake was throwing the ball, and some of his really bad throws would end up getting picked off, and you know, it's just the bad decision making, and now we have a guy under center that is really good at making decisions on a dime, you know, a split decision. He knows how to read defenses, and he's a good quarterback, so that's another big, big reason why these Jaguar wide receivers, I think at least, are going to be able to step up and play really good football is because Nick Foles is going to be that man under center. Also because these wide receivers are going to be targeted a lot. The Jags do not have a solid tight end in their tight end room right now. Josh Oliver, the rookie, who I, like I said in my last video, I don't think he's going to be an immediate impact guy. I don't think he's going to be a day one starter. You got guys like Jeff Swain, who never put up a lot of stats in his career. You know, James O'Shaughnessy, Ben Koyak, the list goes on and on. These tight ends are not reliable. The Jags also don't really have that receiving back coming out of the backfield this year. So these wide receivers are going to get used, and I think they're going to you know, go out and really show you all their potential that they have to be a really, really good wide receiver in this league and for the Jaguars. So now what I want to do is I kind of want to address each wide receiver individually, say what they kind of bring to the table, kind of go over their past accolades, and really talk about why these guys are going to perform and be good for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So Marquise Lee starting things off led the Jags in receiving yards in 2017. Uh, unfortunately, uh, and no, he had, he led in 2016, I should say. Excuse me. Then 2017, Keelan Cole led, and he had, unfortunately had an injury in 2018. But this guy was the definition of Blake Bortles' favorite target, even when Allen Robinson was around. I know Allen Robinson and Allen Hearns got all those yards in 2015, but if Blake wanted to be safe and get it to a reliable guy, it was Marquise Lee. And something that all these wide receivers bring to the table that I'm tremendously excited about is the fact that they can make plays after the catch. All four of them can do that. All five of them, I should say, can do that. And Marquise Lee, that's probably the most major part of his game is what he can do after the catch on drag routes, slant routes, etc. And he has pretty solid hands in the intermediate to short range. He doesn't have the most reliable hands in the deep game, I will admit that. But as far as short games goes and intermediate throws... Marquise Lee will get the ball for you and he's going to manage to do something with his legs after the catch to really hit, have your jaw hit the floor. Now DJ Chark. Chark was really, really awkward last year and I did not hide it. I talked about it a lot. I was like, DJ, why are you so fucking awkward, bud? You know, I didn't understand it. I didn't get why DJ Chark would do things and it would just be so awkward. But he did have some showings where he was able to catch the ball and do things after the catch as well. And that's a big part of DJ Chark's game as well. And I think he could be able to take the top off the defenses. He's a very, very speedy guy. And I think once he gets his, you know, his drops under control, he's going to be the deep threat for us in 2019. He was supposed to ball out last year. Blake Bortles aside, you know, that's kind of been the common theme is the fact that now we have a quarterback that could get you the ball. 
But, you know, DJ Chark didn't have that last year. And I think now that he has this quarterback, you know, a guy that was projected to go in the first round, a guy that the Jags snagged up in the second round, the 2018 draft, I think this guy has tremendous upside, and I think he's going to surprise a lot of you, and I think he's going to be able to ball out. Now we're going to be talking about D.D. Westbrook, the guy that led the Jags in receiving yards in 2018. You look at this wide receiver depth chart right now, you have three guys, three different guys that led the Jaguars in receiving in three different years. So I think that should all also get you give you a little bit of optimism that these guys have been reliable down the stretch and these guys have been Blake Bortles' go-to guy and they've been the leading receiver they've been number one wide receivers so if you look at it Keelan Cole, D.D. Westbrook, Marquise Lee, all three of these guys really have number one wide receiver experience. And, you know, you can make the case the Jags don't have a true number one wide receiver, but we have three guys that have led us in receiving yards in back-to-back-to-back years, and they're all different. So different guys have showed up, and now you mix them all together and hopefully reach their full potential with a full quarterback they should be able to ball out and have a great season. D.D. Westbrook is going to be our number one wide receiver next year. I think that's a fact unless Marquise Lee again comes out and does, you know, about as good as he's been doing for his whole career, basically. So I think D.D. Westbrook is going to be a number one wide receiver. He really showed flashes of it, especially, I believe it was the Dallas game when he caught that touchdown. It was either Dallas or Philly in the back of the end zone. Perfect toe tapper. You know, the guy's football smarts are off the charts, at least in my opinion. I think he's very aware. He has great awareness. He has great speed. He can kill you in the intermediate routes after the catch, and he can burn you deep. I think D.D. Westbrook is a guy to keep your eye on because I think he'll be our number one wide receiver this year, and I think he will lead us in receiving yards this year because I think Nick Foles and him are going to get a connection. Now we got Chris Conley. Chris Conley is a guy that I really, really liked in Kansas City, and I really liked seeing how he played. And if he was still in Kansas City now with the Tyreek situation, he'd probably come in and be the number one wide receiver. He's the perfect in-slot guy. He could return kicks. He could return punts. He's speedy. You know, he has the chance to make you miss an open field. Another guy that can make things happen after the catch. And that's what the Jags are looking for as far as wide receivers go. Because we're not going to be taking a lot of chances down the field, though we can now with Nick Foles. We are going to be kind of more concerned with what these wide receivers can do after the catch. And we brought in Chris Conley, a guy that can do that, and another guy that fits the scheme that's the same thing with Keelan Cole except Keelan Cole is more of the take the top off the defense deep route guy he is the deep threat but last year led the league in drops he's gonna have to get that under control in order to come out and ball out in 2019 but like I said these wide receivers fit the scheme and they fit what Jacksonville is trying to run in 2019 so I really don't think you guys should be worried about these wide receivers because I think they are gonna do just fine And that was why you should not be concerned with the Jaguars receivers in 2019. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you want to get yourself some Troop Talks merchandise, go over to teespring.com forward slash store forward slash Troop Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.